The first part of this three-part series on the Island of Seven Cities will give you a short history of the island, describe why its location made the island so valuable, and introduce the theory that the best explanation of the island's mysterious early history may be found in the voyages of the 15th century ocean-going fleets of China. The theory outlined in the book shown here suggests that in the 15th century or before, the Chinese sailed to the east coast of Canada, settled there on an island that came to be known in Europe as the Island of Seven Cities, and left a sizable imprint both on the land and on the indigenous people of the region, the Mi'kmaq, who still live in this area. The three parts of this slide presentation will outline that theory, point out its many different elements, and try to address some of the questions raised. This is a map of the world's oceans. The story of this discovery begins in China. We know that by the 15th century the Chinese were sailing throughout the Indian Ocean. It is without question that they reached the east coast of Africa. And once a ship reached the southern tip of Africa, the currents in the Atlantic would have done the rest. A ship in these waters, simply because of the way the oceans flow and by doing very little actual sailing, will end up here, on a small island called Cape Breton Island. Off the eastern coast of Cape Breton, the powerful Gulf Stream current turns out to the open ocean. It joins a northern current flowing in the opposite direction. The current becomes colder and it slows down. The island is located at this crucial juncture in world shipping. At one time, because of its position at the opening of the Gulf of St. Lawrence, the island was considered the gateway to the interior of the continent. And because of these currents off its coast, these waters were once thick with fish. Until a few years ago, it had the largest edible fish population in the world. The island is unusually rich in natural resources, including minerals. Cape Breton has the best exposed coal seam along the Atlantic seaboard, and in the early centuries of European discovery, the island supplied luxury furs and built ships for the French court. From its very earliest history, this island was considered extremely valuable. Europeans knew about Cape Breton Island even before John Cabot discovered it in 1497. In the early years of the Age of Discovery, it was known as the Island of Seven Cities. This Island of Seven Cities was believed to have been an island in the northern Atlantic that had great cities, a sophisticated populace. They spoke several languages, they had libraries, they mined gold. We know that Cape Breton was this famous Island of Seven Cities because both Christopher Columbus and John Cabot left records to that effect. Let me explain. In the early years of European discovery, the island of Cape Breton was mapped with a longer island to the north and smaller islands to the south, like this 1692 Coronelli map or this 1604 map by Marc Lescarbeau. This is a section of the Christopher Columbus map from about 1490, drawn before Europeans had surveyed the island. Here, correctly positioned in the unknown northern Atlantic, was this, Columbus's rendering of the mysterious Island of Seven Cities, drawn well before his visit to the New World, it was an island with the same configuration, the same waterways, the same proportion, the same scale of parts, and the same orientation as Cape Breton Island. To be clear, before discovery of the New World, there was a map of Cape Breton Island, surveyed and drawn, circulating in Europe, a map that Columbus had copied from. Someone, some large expedition, had mapped Cape Breton Island before the European Age of Discovery, before Europeans had visited this coast. Then it was known as the Island of Seven Cities. This Island of Seven Cities that Columbus drew had a long legend attached to it. During the 15th century, in the early years of European discovery, mariners lost in the Atlantic reported finding it. Adventurers went looking for it, and both the Portuguese and the English kings awarded contracts for its discovery. This document is from the Portuguese archives. An explorer was given the contract to discover the Island of Seven Cities by order of the king, this in 1486. And there are several of these royal contracts, all in the years before Columbus. In 1497, John Cabot claimed he discovered the island of seven cities. It was Cape Breton Island. You see, in the early years of the European discovery of the Americas, a newly found place of importance in the Americas wasn't given a latitude reference, a number like it is now, it was given a location, a, a place in Western Europe that had the same angle with the stars, the same position on the globe, the same line of latitude. When John Cabot returned from his voyage to the New World in 1497, he reported, very specifically, 
that the southernmost part of the Island of Seven Cities was west of the Bordeaux River. That is Cape Breton Island within three kilometers. Even by present day standards, Cabot's directions would be considered exact. This has been a criticism of the theory of early Chinese settlement here on the east coast of Canada, that the Island of Seven Cities was nothing more than a 15th century fantasy. It was not. It was real. Something of importance was here. Columbus had a map of the island before Europeans had surveyed and drawn it. European mariners searched for it, and John Cabot believed he had discovered it.